If I say hello, can you all hear me? Yes. Hello. Hi. Um, Hi. I'm going to have to, to apologise that the front end is quite windy, so you might get a bit of background noise. I don't know much about that. But I'm just going to wait a minute for people to come through. Well, exactly what was wrong? Well, a lot of mucky, isn't it? A lot of yeah. little family bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there's a ballot. Hi, Hi. 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 Hi.
Well, this would have been definitely here at the time. It's a really old farmhouse. But recent tyres. Yeah, no doubt you know that. This is the open ground that the charge will have taken place. So this is the village where he spent his, his night on the 11th of November. So that's once the war had actually finished. It's, it's a mixture now of quite old properties and quite modern ones, but this church would definitely have been there at the time. It says two participants at the moment. So I'll give it another minute. How are you all doing? Have you had a nice lunch? Yes, thank you. How are you? Oh, we, we've got two satellite um, sat nav systems on the go, one in the car and one on Jeff's phone. And we must, I think we've got lost on four occasions. Hello. It, it's, not, it's not easy, is it? No, no. it's very easy. Very farm track type roads. Yeah. Where we've just yeah. been. But it's a flavour of William's War, you know, the journey we've just done to here. That there will have been absolutely that sort of terrain for him. And there is, we, we know it from this area of Belgium, there's just so little here. It does, you know, it farms and nothing else. Very flat, just what you'd expect. But uh, yeah. I'll, probably, I'll start where we are. This will be a real quick one, but. That today is a real soft landing, isn't it, into his war. Tomorrow we start some of the, obviously, the real paths he got involved in and how, how horrible that was. And, you know, we get real close to, uh, to where that action was. But this is a nice one to, to finish today on because it's uh, the Grand Plaza at Perivelts. Uh, and it's here on the 15th of November. We know they did have a Thanksgiving. The Queen's Bays had a big Thanksgiving service. So the square is as it was. You see these buildings are you know, they weren't bombed, they weren't shelled. These parts of Belgium were in German hands, you know, mostly throughout the war. So it's really nice we look at this to think this is how William would have seen it. Yeah. And I'm really delighted there's not a fairground on it. <laughs> oh yes, you said before we might be on Disney. Yeah, exactly. We're just wandering so you get a feel of it. Yeah, it looks like they've got some nice gardens here as well. Aww. See the flowers. How's the cameraman been? Is he up to scratch? Uh, very, very good. Very <laughs> impressed. Well done, Jeff. <laughs> That's not what I've heard. 
there any plaques or memorials in the square? No, we're looking. No. I was talking, I did you see the plaque up there? Yeah, it just sort of says that a concrete wall was constructed in 2012, unless it means the garden was constructed. Right, that looks more right. Right. Yeah. There's certainly no warm up. But you see, we're not, these areas weren't in the midst of the fighting. No. So I think you won't have village, you know, many villages. You know, Belgium is in a completely different place. No, it will be very different from tomorrow when we're in France. Yeah. You know, you'll see, we'll be seeing. And, I, and uh, Mike, you, you I should, we'll share it tomorrow, but we're going to a memorial that will mean something to you. I'll save that for tomorrow, but it's the link to some you told me that your dad said. Uh, that there's tons of things like that, but no, this is you can picture them, can't you? There must have been about 700 of them. And uh, for William, this was his last day, the war was four days over, and he took his first leave, as I said earlier, took his first leave uh, from during the war years. He had two weeks back at home after this to then rejoin again. But it must have felt we're standing here thinking. That's no dear, you know, why would you come here? But it must have been a massive relief when they were here. Oh, yeah. You and know, then to over. He stayed there for two weeks then, Chris. No, he's, he's here. He was here for uh, about four days after war ended. It was four days after war ended. And then he came home for two weeks. Ah, uh, right. So, so he, stay, he stayed. It looks like he stayed here for the 15th. They all stayed to do a Thanksgiving service. And then right. at the end of that, when you look, because we've got a service record, we're so lucky. On the 16th, he's heading back to England. And he had to say it was the only leader to take any leave during that entire period. And that is likely to be by choice because they, they take turns. And I've shared with you my dad's stories. And he did say that many soldiers didn't want to take leave. They thought it was unlucky to come home. And, uh, Harry didn't want to come home in, in my dad's story. And, you know, gosh, that's what happened there. Um, so I wonder whether William was the same. Maybe he just thought, no, I'm sticking it out. Yeah. Uh, you know, and of course, when he came back, as uh, you know, Mike, you know, you shared the story of him, of, of what he did thereafter, because it, it did then. Then he could he could have finished in India, blimey, you know, what a career that would have been. Uh, but I'm just taking in here. It just feels uh, it was a shame it's not. If it had been all blue sky, and it probably would have felt different. But it, it must just have felt peace you know the world's suddenly become a more sensible place again it felt cold on the 15th of november probably. oh hey would you right <laughs> yeah it feels cool today but you're right it would have been freezing then yeah. doubt that was uh, doubt that was an issue so we're going to do we're going to go from here to uh oh basa basa please basa no, i practiced the pronunci pronunciation this morning it's all gone um, <laughs> so in basa the where he was on the Go on, Fran. I was going to say, have you two gone via the pubs? No, there aren't even pubs. You definitely wouldn't holiday here. You'd be so disappointed. This is the <laughs> first place you've come to that's got places like that. Um, we didn't have any food or water until about 40 minutes ago. Really? Uh, including breakfast. So, yeah, it's been one of those runs. Um, but, it, yeah, we're going we're to go to this place on the 10th of November, the day before war ended. It was at another place about three miles from here, uh, Basicles, I think it is. Don't know anything about where they stayed, so I can't pinpoint where the regiment was. And I know there's a really old castle there. We thought we'd have a look at that. Um, but it will be somewhere oh. in the fields around there. So we'll send you a photograph of that. We went into Montenay uh, Le Lans, um, and which is where he was on the, the night of the 11th. And that's, quite, that's a really old, quaint little place. So we took a few photographs in there. We'll send you those pictures through today. So you'll get a flavor of that. So all we've done today really is from the 10th of November to the 15th, the five days he had from the last two days of the war and then the three days culminating the service here and then coming home. So the real story, I guess you could say, starts tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So it's been good to share. Are you all right with the Zooms? Because we will be videoing anyway. You're happy to keep having a few minutes just to get the flavour of it? Yeah, yeah, fine. Right, brilliant. Okay. And uh, apologies if I keep having to send messages saying 
Jeff Slate again. Um, <laughs> got us lost. Got us lost. No, again. It, it's fine. And like you say, those that can go on can go on. And if you can't, it's not a problem. Exactly. You can upload them, can't you? So exactly that. Yeah. Very good. And we might. Some places we've not put a Zoom down. I might just put a WhatsApp to say, well, if you're there and you pick your message up, we'll just go live for you. We'll do it yeah. while you're, while you're yeah. on. So you're right. When it's all through, I think you'll certainly feel through tomorrow and Sunday. I think it's going to be remarkable being in, we'll be standing in something like this, but knowing actually the fighting that went on there, the real war that William went through. Because, uh, you know, we did have, we now know, he did have some nightmare scenarios. Um, you know, he's, he's done, I think the regiment, nearly half were affected with casualties of some description. So, uh, and his medical record shows nothing like that. So he's he's really escaped it. He's been, uh, I'm going to call my dad again. One of, you're just lucky. You know, you don't get it. The bloke next to you did. Uh, did. Um, but it's nice to be able to, it's really nice to do a story like this and not end at a cemetery and say, the man we've just followed, you know, sadly, he died on such a day. It's great to do it for William and know that, you know, we should remember those who survived it, not just those that, that passed away. So it's been a lovely thing to do for you all. Right, well, I'm going to get back in the wall. So good, good to chat to you, good to throw it all in. And uh, watch out for some stuff through tonight. Probably we'll send a few photographs through of the, the couple of places. Oh, lovely. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Chris. you're welcome. Yeah. Okay, Thank cheers. Bye, Take care, everyone. Bye. Cheers. Bye, Bye Chris. Bye. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, we're here. I think you can see where we are. We're at Dick of the Bus. I think I've probably pronounced that one maybe right. Um, it's funny that we've started this fantastic story um, of Williams in Belgium because it is only a very short period of his war. But he's in Belgium. And yesterday we did the last few days of the war for him. He gave him the war facilities ceased. Today we're picking up the 31st of July 1917, and it's today's going to be all about the battles he was involved in. Really poignant. 31st of July 1917 was the third Battle of Ypres. Uh, for any of you that saw the last post clip I did last night with Jeff. Jeff's great uncle, James Gatley, passed away. Uh, on the first day of battle was killed, probably never found, and he's named on the Menin Gate. Um, but the Queen's Bays, William, was here at Dickabus. Uh, Dick was in the village itself, was completely obliterated in the war, so we driven through it. No reason really to show him through you, there's not a lot to see there. But where we are now is will be where Queen's Bays were, they were out in the fields. Uh, just short of it, so he would have been in readiness for the battle here. So we know he arrived here on that first day of the battle and just kept here uh, preparing. It was going to be a, such a massive attack from the Allied forces, but the weather was horrendous and I think they only got half the ground that they hoped. Uh, this was the push towards Pilkham Ridge. Uh, was the big issue on day one uh, and it just didn't happen so the Queen's Bays were here all day in the rain just waiting and they realised that it, it was never going to happen and uh, Jeff made a comment to me earlier as we were just checking the area out that well, I'm, we're looking now we're three miles from Ypres and there's no doubt about it while he was here all day probably really scared wondering what was ahead of him the skyline in all the horrible weather the skyline would have been a nightmare because they they put thousands and thousands and thousands of shells so the sounds and the sights they'd have had must have been terrifying because he would have known or thought that at some stage in that day they were going to be asked to gallop through wherever we got and would then be exposed to some horrendous uh, machine gun firing undoubtedly and shelling so that didn't happen, fortunately, you know, for our William. Uh, but he would have had here, say, what a what a day for him. Another battle that he was ready for uh, on this occasion took no part in. Uh, but I think he would have remembered this place as a result of that. So that's the start to our day. We're now going to head. That's the end of Belgium, really. He only came here. For, they were pushed here, knowing it was a major battle uh, that was going to take place uh, here at uh, Ypres. And uh, a day later, 
he's moved way out of here they're nowhere near here and they're doing musketry practice so they knew with the quagmire that came around the fighting here there is no way the cavalry could have been involved in that stage for some time so he literally did come here for the dead this day and then straight back out again i think that's not unusual particularly for the queen's bays so that's the start of our day uh, and the next time I'll see you will be at Vimy where actually we, we've got him working at Vimy rather than fighting there but it's a wonderful place to see and you can see from the weather we've got an amazing day today and, and trust me Vimy is such a beautiful spot amazing tribute Canadian tribute so look forward to that uh, and see you later yeah he must have been really pleased I think to have left here as well because yeah. the next few months really of the battle of Passchendaele as it, as it became known was just absolutely horrendous and everybody that was in the forces must have known how horrendous it was. Yeah, it? So, you're right, it's three months, you're right, yeah, three months so. of fighting and the pictures of the fighting are, the, are those that look like the moon because there's no terrain left, there's no trees left. There's well no it was just the mud wasn't it and, and the pools of yeah. water you know and losing Everything, you're losing people, losing horses, losing equipment into the mud. Drowning. Yeah. Yeah. It's horrendous God, place. Right. Yeah. Horrific. Right, okay. Catch you all later. I'm, I think we should start. I'm just conscious of uh, the time on this. Yeah. We don't, go you know, such a tight schedule. So, not sure whether Fran will be joining us, but we'll, okay. we'll start. I'm going to hand the phone over to, to Jeff. Let me spin it round. Okay. Okay. No. No. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's only this day. <clears throat> right, well, good to see you. Uh, Anthony, you isn't it? Yes. Good to see you. Fant uh, fantastic. We just like the fact that on occasions people can join us live. I know we can video it anyway, and this is being taped, but uh, it, it just feels like you're here, you're with us, you know. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do quickly the story of what this is. We're at Vimy. Vimy is such a famous spot. It is the Canadian. Remembrance area. Obviously, we're going to walk up some most impressive monuments uh, of all. But the link to our story to William uh, is that uh, we did this morning with Dicker Bush because he was there on the first day of the third battle of Ypres. Uh, a month before then, he was here at Vimy, and it's a different role for him. He came here, Vimy had been captured. It's horrendous round here. You'll see the ridge is a dramatic thing on raised ground. It's really, it is dramatic, really dramatic. Um, when William was here on the 11th of June 1917, so it's only a month and a half before that third battle of Ypres, uh, there at that time there are what they call a, a composite pioneer battalion, which means the pioneer battalions were they basically repaired trenches. They came here to do so. His role was so varied during the war. Uh, they were just captured. So he worked on here uh, on the 8th of July. So on this trench line, so from the monument we were going to see all the way to the village. Uh, so quite something that they should be here. It is really sacred ground. You will see lots of people there because it is a regular spot for tourists. And it, uh, you probably can't see it obviously on the film because it won't come up as well. But just behind me, you can see the pop marks of all the shells. The fighting here was fierce for years. Oh wow! Yeah. Can you get that? Yeah, it can. Yeah. You know, it's, when, the, the, when you come through the trees, Jeff, to be honest, as well, there's a, there's a fence here as well to stop people going into it because there's still stuff that's yeah. unexploded in there. Oh, really? Still live, live ammunition there? Yeah, 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 so it's all still fenced off. Let it down the trees. Um, yeah, it's really dramatic. It, you know, it does look like the world. You can see the impact of the, the thousands and thousands of shells that would have. Yeah. Oh, it is dramatic. But we're, we're conscious of time. We haven't got an awful yeah. lot of time here. Uh, he was no. here a month, but it's not his, his, his battle, you might say. He would have been a working man here. Probably felt really relieved to be here, um, even though it was hard work. And the, the, the pyramids, not, that's why it was strategic importance, I think, isn't it? Go on, you'd say that, Jeff. There was a particular strategic importance, I think, because of the coal mines that are there. Yeah. Probably picture the slag heaps in the distance. Okay. They look like two pyramids in the distance. Oh yeah, I can see those, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was just a massive importance. And the fighting when Jeff went behind there before, it's all coming up this hill. It's quite a quite a slope up here. Yeah. Uh, so you'll see, we're just gonna pan round to this 
fantastic monument. But I actually think it's an uplifting one. This the monument in Seattle, the British monument, is quite dark and forbidding. It's quite um, good reason to feel like that. But I think what the Canadians did. I'm sure I read that this is a uh, Croatian stone they got. Beautiful stone. And even though the image is a bit off, clearly uh, of sorrow, it's um, quite good being here. So every time we come and look, it's a cool look at it. Mm. Really you impressive. Beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. This is stunning, isn't it? Beautiful. We're now heading to the, the ridge that we put up over the top of the beach. It's going to be very windy here, so apologies. I've oh, got the dates on this now, you can see here. Of April 1917, with four divisions in line on a front of four miles, attacked and captured this ridge. And we'd failed miserably for years. So it is a, a really significant piece of their history. But now we're here, I guess you can see this massive drop. And you know, seeing what you can in the distance, no wonder this was an, a strategically important point. Yeah. And Williams worked here, so once captured. So we're only talking. Two months, two months after this was captured, Williams here working on the trenches, rebuilding it. So where Jeff's looking now is towards Vimy Village, uh, and he, he was from here where it was uh, captured, all the way to the right where we're now looking. So I think he'd have felt okay here. He'd have been out of the firing line, uh, working hard, but probably quite motivated. And actually, just about a personal bit to this story. Right across where we're looking now, so I'm kind of pointing it out in the distance. I can't make anything out there, it's kind of field. But my grandfather was gassed at a place called Mericourt, and Mericourt oh. is probably about three miles, it's within sight of where we are, remarkably. Uh, so when we were there, when we did my grandfather's story, we could see Vimy Ridge, and I haven't realized how close it was to Vimy. Uh, I didn't know much of his war for many a year, so we're actually looking here on the the ground where my grandfather was gassed, he, and he was well, he didn't look at his eyesight for a month or so he was kind of there at the time. So it's quite a place for me, this, you know, for, for those reasons. So, so I think, oh, John, here's the school party. And that's a, a, a usual sight here. Yeah. And uh, the lady who told us off walking up the rest quite rightly, uh, they just come over, they're normally youngsters. They're very proud of their history. They all the ballot that uh, they go into to come over, and if they succeed in that, gosh, they're so so different. We just just to finish it up with saying, it's kind of the mother of all the lost. Oh, I think this is she's standing on the edge. Um, I shall guide you down the steps, Jeff, because I was joking about you. Yeah, only because it'll delay the schedule a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's shaking. <laughs> I mean, again, I think how dramatic. We're looking down the ridge that was fought for years. And this is, you know, the mother losing all her sons. Like I say, for all the sorrow, quite rightly, there's something quite inspiring, I think, about it. Quite something, isn't it? Yeah, it is, isn't it? 
see this side. Oh, it's a great picture of the school. So I think that's our that's our Vimy bit. It was oh, nice to share that. These the names. Oh yeah. yeah sorry. Names inscribed on the stones. It just goes all the way around the site, I think. That's amazing. Yeah. I have a feeling there's 11,000 names, but I'm going on memory there. It certainly feels that scale, doesn't it? Right. As it has been great, thanks for joining us. It's been lovely yeah, to share. Thank you. Really interesting. Uh, and we're going to move on now. We, we've actually got the next bit of the journey is the first bit of a, it's going to be quite dramatic that uh, it was a, a, a battle they were really involved in and they were really hit hard and we found the exact location so it'd be quite something to be able to take through all that so I think that's probably half an hour after. I think we need to get our skates on it don't we? <laughs> <All> <laughs> we right. might be sending a message saying we're late but it's the nature of this trip I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> right okay we'll sign off lovely to see you and perhaps hey, see you in a bit. Thank you very yeah. much. Yes. Yeah, Bye. Take care. Bye. Hand it on to the professional cameraman. <laughs> so I need to put everybody up. Oh no, no, I have not done that yet. Thank God. What have you done with Uncle Mike, Fran? It's just right. making some well fun. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, it's hard because it's quite windy. We can hear a lot of the wind noise here. But right, we're into um, yesterday was all about Belgium, the end of the war. I said that at the beginning of the day. Right, we're at one of his. Th this remembrance trip is mostly about the battles he was involved in. And my goodness, he had some. The one we're covering now is the second Battle of Arras. Uh, as Jeff said to me earlier, Arras just seems to have been fighting right through. And it's the kind of the forgotten battle. We remember the song, we remember Passchendaele, their names that ring, ring to this day. But I'm sure I'm right in saying there were more men lost at Ar the battles around Arras than anywhere on the Western Front. Uh, so it's the second Battle of Arras that William's at, and it's the, I'm not caught, my memory's not that brilliant, it's the 10th of April, thank you, Jeff, yours better than mine, the 10th of April, 1917. So actually, we've just done Vimy, and we did Dickerbush. We're really in... Uh, three month period here so this is all very close he's he's got the second battle of arras at the end of that when they withdrew they're working on the line of vimy and then a month after that they're preparing for the battle of ypres pretty scary that feels to me a month out of that so so the, they're here uh the regiment here the queen's base they were heading for a place called fon Poo, which is uh where we could end up we'll do, that's the last bit of this little threesome uh on the day that they were coming through, the first day of the second battle of Paris was the ninth. And as they were coming through, the traffic, the weather was horrendous. It was snowy. It was it just sounded like awful conditions. And the war diary refers to the traffic being immense. So the cavalry, the Queen's Bay, couldn't get through. So on that night, they had to stay somewhere. So just northwest of a place called Atti. I'm smiling because we've been really practicing on our friend. Uh, at sea. Uh, so just to my left here, uh, th these fields here are where 500 horses were the camps. So they couldn't get through to Palm Poo where they were uh, heading to fight the Germans. And what we're looking at now is the map they stayed just that one night. And we'll do the story. It's not a nice one. But the night before he's here, after the fighting, so I'll do that story in a minute, in the, in the, in the, a bit later. Um, they came back here on the 12th of April and they stayed here for three days, I assume in readiness again. But what happened at the end on the 15th of April, there was just heavy shelling here and four of the, four of the horses were killed. I bet it broke William's heart. I know you often read the soldiers say that seeing the horses die in many ways hurt them as much, if not more, than seeing you know, men die. They, they were so respected the horses, and the horses were so amazing to them. It must have been horrible. So that's our kickoff. It's just kind of where they were, literally. What we're going to do now is, I was going to carry on filming. We, we, there's one of the, at Farm Poo, I think there were four killed. One chap was killed. There's a chap called E. E. Gale. And we're going to, I, I want to do a, 
sorry, E. Dale it is. Um, I want to remember, I think they're all friends of Williams. Uh, some of them might be really close friends, but I regard them all as pals and, and fighting together. So we're going to go to his grave. It's only, we could walk there, but we're obviously going to drive to there. Now we could carry on filming as a few guys. If you want to, if you happen to keep the thing rolling, we'll be about two minutes in the car and then we'll walk into the cemetery. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Okay. Go for okay. It, yeah. We'll be about two minutes to the cemetery as long as we don't get lost. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, navigator and cameraman now. see the cross of sacrifice there they have i think if it's is it a hundred if there are a hundred graves uh commonwealth war grave they put a cross of sacrifice brian you'll have heard me tell that story a dozen times for, for the kids yeah but you can see one thing is i always like to point out is um the, the cross obviously is a christian remembrance of the fallen but there's a dagger if you can just see in the a dagger pointing down at the top of the cross and that kind of is to represent the end of what was always in distant eras that the end of battle was signified by a dagger being put into the ground so that's meant to signify as well the end of battle and they do say they put them so that the shadow cannot go on any grave but that's not the case here one grave has got a shadow on it so it probably probably very few to right well we want the efg up in the third day. it's in a hurry isn't it yeah <clears throat> So here he is, or I hope you can see all that. E. Dale, Queen's Bays, died on the 11th of April, 1917. So we just said that the field we were looking at, William was in there the night before, and then on the 11th, and he was killed at Farm Pook. We're gonna head there now. It's only two or three miles up the road, and we can tell the story of what happened there. But sadly, I don't know the E, I've tried to find out the E, uh, got there's, there's nothing and if you look at the bottom of the cross normally there's somebody in the family will put something beautiful yeah. as you well know Fran it's the it's often what you make the songs out of there's nothing here I checked the Commonwealth War Graves records no mention of his family um, which is really sad some of that is because the families were so devastated they couldn't bring it upon themselves to reply you know to put anything on um, it is a story that gets repeated when we do these of the next day or so for the Queen's Bays. But I'm just going to do a, as an honour, um, I'm sure William would want me to do this. I've got these lovely poppies. Um, so I'm going to put this beautiful thing which will survive all sorts of weather. And I've checked it's an outdoor one as well. So I'm going to put that on these great plants. There's no one on this line who's been remembered this way, so I think this is perfect. You know, the ground would be really <laughs> hard. You're so strong, do not it? When it's... <laughs> <laughs> there you go, that one's come out. Oh, that's nice, Chris. Oh. We will remember you. Absolutely. We will remember. Naturally. Chris. Yeah, I'm just going to, sorry, I'm going to finish as I... Chris, can you hear that? Say that again. Can you hear this? Yeah.
Ran, that was such a beautiful thing to do. Um, oh, gosh, thank you for doing that. And I'm, I'm going to finish off with the two verses, which I think have to be said here. They went with songs to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Ah, oh. we will remember them. So all there's a few. Well, there's a few here quite close to one another, aren't there? So they're different, all different regiments, but you can put the dates on the line. That uh, and in fact, I'm looking at the line. They're all April 1917. So I think we can say everyone that's buried on, well, certainly on this row, on the next row I can see, and on the row in front of that is still, these are all, pretty much all, I think, have fought at the Battle of Arras. So you can see the scale just for, you know, one part of the war and for just you know, even part of a month or one month. Yeah, so we've got North Stats Regiment, Gordon Highlanders, Royal Irish Fusiliers, Queen's Bays, Hampshire Regiment, South African yeah. Regiment, Seaforth Highlanders. Dad's just said yeah. that Mum's uncle was killed at Arras. Oh, really? Mm. What was his name? John Varley. Sorry, I missed that. John Varley. Oh, yeah, that's you, you told me that yesterday, Fran. That was the name. Was that no, the name you gave me? No, that I was giving you some um, oh, right. information about uh, Paul and Tony's dad. Right. Oh, it, we could have looked. Probably. I wonder where he's buried. There is a really, really large French cemetery at Arras that's uh, terrifying. Yeah, it's, it's in the, um, um, the communal cemetery. There's, there's an area there for the war graves. We went to visit it. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. What I would say here is we know, you can see how close it is, but we're going to do Fompu now, the, the fighting there itself. But in the First World War, they did bury them pretty much where they fell. Um, you know, so the soldiers here will have been fighting in this area. Whereas yeah. the Second World War, they did that initially, but then moved them to these really big cemeteries that could be 50 miles away. Um, it's not the case in the First World War. So if you are, you know, if we were trying to do the story here, um, of E. Dale, uh, but we didn't know where he fought. The one thing you could say is, well, it's somewhere around here. You know, it's yeah, it's where it works. Well, Paul, Paul, and Tony, who are online now, and Sheila and Mary and Martin, their dad was Victor Vallely, and he was a sergeant in World War Two. Right. Would be our next story, Chris. Because yeah, we haven't got many to work on at the moment, have we? No, so we can have to go on in. <laughs> no, and I, I think it's. I think the lovely thing about doing this is it does you spread your wings and it gives more stories come through, and it's right that they get followed up. You know, I mean, we're our dad, our dad never told anybody at all really much about the war, apart from his sister Joan. Yeah. Uh, I've heard a few facts via her, but he kept it very secret. He was a commando. And uh, I don't know what he did, but he kept it very secret. Right. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. It, was, I think wasn't he involved at Dunkirk and D-Day, Paul? Yes, he was. Um, uh, he, he was. On, he was a royal engineer, and he was seconded to the commandos. And um, he was. He was at Dunkirk, and I can't remember if it was a jumper or a pair of socks. One of his aunties had knitted him and he had to leave it behind at Dunkirk and she was very cross and um, then uh, on D-Day he was up in Scotland uh, he was back in the Royal Engineers then and he was up in Scotland um, working on the kind of landing craft that, um, uh, that they used to land 
Uh, what were those uh, bridges called, Paul? I can't remember. The pot, something pontoon, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, there were three. <laughs> there, if you go up to Scotland, you can see on this southern peninsula where they built them because the, the rise and fall of the tide was the same as it was at uh, Normandy. And there were these different kinds of um, uh, pontoons that they worked on and then they decided which was the best. They built them there. And one of the locals told Auntie Joan that uh, one day they were all, all there, all these pontoons, and the next day they'd all gone. Yeah, you won't check this, no. And they were all being to towed down the... Um, uh, down, down the Irish Sea, round into the um, the Channel for, for the invasion, and he said that's how we knew the invasion was coming soon because all the pontoons went overnight. Just, can, we're just going to cut our oh, brilliant story. That sorry, mm -hmm. I'm just going to cut in because we need to get on. What I was I was going to carry on to farm poo? But it's probably worth if you just stay where you are. We're uh, probably only. <laughs> Five minutes away from Farm Poo, plus 25 minutes to get lost and find it. No, we're probably only within the next 10 minutes we can share that bit. But just as we're leaving, we spotted, and I do remember seeing this, there's a German grave here. Same date, April 17 again. Yeah, so he was involved. No. Yeah, in the same fighting. I was going to ask if Germans are buried in the same cemetery. Very, very rare. We've seen so many of these over the years, and it is really rare. So I'm not sure, you know, the story behind this. Um, and I think that we did see on here, there are quite a few here, and I think there's another cemetery we visit in the next day. Uh, so no, very, very unusual to see this. And we, we have you, gone... Uh, Pat, Chris, when you panned round, uh, we looked at all the graves when uh, yes. the song was being played, which is very beautiful, by the way. Um, I noticed right. that some of the graves are very close together, but some of them are quite well spaced. What's the story of that? Uh, we, I've quizzed that on occasions. Uh, and sometimes two graves are touching each other and we've thought there's probably a reason. But when I've um, raised that with the Commonwealth War Graves, they've said no reason. It would just be, you know, as, as and when they're doing them. I read a brilliant book about what the uh, some of the soldiers are at the end of the war. They stayed over here for three years. They became part of the operation of burying, giving these men proper burial. And it was a horrendous thing they had to do, as you can imagine. So I think it is just down to that. It will be, you know, the ability of the men working. So there is absolutely no link whatsoever to those spacing. Uh, and there's another thing I can say about it in that there's also no ranking when you come here. Um, there may be somebody in here that got the Victoria Cross, was a, you know, a very senior officer or whatever. The, uh, the men are treated all equal. So they don't separate anybody. Right, well, I think uh, what we'll, we're going to cut off now. So if you grab a cup of tea or something, we shouldn't be very far away. And we'll tell, we've covered where William was uh, just before, um, just before they, they left to come to battle, which is just over in that direction. We're passing the cemetery, one of the Queen's Bay's Edale died. So we're now going to head on to my right as I'm looking, and we'll actually go into the village of Pompu and can tell the story of what happened there. Um, so I say, I think that's going to be maybe 10 minutes. Okay, Cokes. So grab a cup of tea and we'll see you then. I'm with the technology of this thing, honest. Right. We've we'll got get... to put the camera the other way around. Yeah, well, yeah, in a sec. I ju just wanted to say thanks for before, and Fran in particular, that was just beautiful. That was such a surprise. But it's hard for us to describe when you're standing at the grave of someone, you know, as with the connection to William like that. And hearing that song, I love those words anyway. Uh, it was such a brilliant thing to do. Gosh, uh, we I think we've definitely made William a, a, a proud man today. Right, going to do what Jeff said. You don't want to look at us. It looks like you're going to have to. All right, there we go. Right, so Jeff, we're, we're just approaching Fon Pu is the place where I'm now going to describe the critical day that William had in that fight. But they came up with the fields that we're now looking at. They came up through here. And the story of, as they got there here, it, it must have been chaos. You can see from the graves of how many people died in this. And it said, where we are now, the, the Queen's Bays were heavily shelled. The whole regiment came up here, and they were just suddenly hit by the most horrendous of the fire. It must have been terrifying. Uh, so I'm going to put the, switch the car on. So you, you're now getting the last bit into Farm Poop. It was quite a steep climb from where we came from, and we're just on the top of that hill now. So this would have been 
as I say the route so sorry you're just getting the drive but this is the route that the Queen's Bays would have had you'll see the sign farm for any second and they were at this point they're being blasted to bits now I don't know whether William was in the some of them broke off to go into the center William might have been one of them if he wasn't he's still here being heavily uh, shelled as I say and I think we should come to a ch the critical part of this story comes it's boulangerie Chris a boulangerie yeah, but yes. we should marked on the map wow oh, there's the church okay oh, the church oh, it's been the place that I was expecting there's a war graves thing here on the left as well yeah, one thing you'll notice when we're, particularly now in France, you don't go many uh, miles without seeing these green signs, uh, which are the cemeteries, the Commonwealth War cemeteries. There are just thousands of them. Just just pointed out, you can see here, Fompu, British Cemetery. Can you see that sign? Okay. Yeah. So it's just another one. No. It is so tragic, the history around here. This is the church here, is it? No, it's a bit further on. Oh, you see the... So all of this, what we're saying now is this road I'm doing is where the Queen's Bays were entering into the, the village. Just here on the right, Chris. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it now, thanks. There's another war grave one there on the left. Yeah, yeah. Level, Level crossing the cemetery. So this is a bad part of the battle. <laughs> I'm going to park at how far the crossroad you think from here. I'm sorry, mate. Do you know, I'm amazed I've not got people honking at me all the time. I keep forgetting there's people behind me. Bloody British. <laughs> yeah, they will. <laughs> yeah. Is, that, is that a poster of Macron then? It is, yeah. yeah, Marine Le Pen, but it looks like uh, you're not too happy with uh, Macron on that one. Is that, yeah, has <laughs> he been graffitied? <laughs> <laughs> And there's the map map. Yeah. So there's the local local town hall. The cemetery's just behind you here, Chris. So. Yeah, we're heading to the crossroads. All right. Is that a wild bird or somebody got a bird in a cage? <laughs> that, seems have, that seems to have followed you on the whole trip. You could see uh, in the last post last night, couldn't you? You could, yeah. <laughs> Can you see the uh, memorial? Go on, let me cross. It was quite funny on the radio before this morning. Will Young was on, and his uh, smoke alarm was going off, and apparently it was causing confusion throughout the country because people thought that it was their smoke alarms. <laughs> Just showing the, the French War Memorial. They're all immaculately maintained, aren't they? Absolutely. Yeah. That's another Commonwealth. Yeah, Wars. another Commonwealth War Graves. Yeah. Again in the communal cemetery. Right. I'll read from the book of diary to give this story just because it, it tells the story quite dramatically. Uh, we're now walking, <laughs> we're now giving ears if you are here, you're actually getting up. This is the route the bays came down, as I said earlier, the, the, it's really heavy. Yep. And I thought... This way we're going to walk for two miles now. Yes. Yeah, it looked, it looked really small <laughs> on the map. <laughs> It's all on one page, you see. 
But when you got a world atlas, it doesn't quite count. <laughs> Very quiet, isn't it? Yeah. Is this a car in the middle of the pavement? Yeah, <laughs> but it's normally ours. <laughs> but this is uh, like an old barn here, so this would have been definitely oh, yeah. here at the time. So I don't know whether it's been rebuilt or managed to stay intact, but that would have definitely been there then. Yeah. Like a horse. <laughs> yeah, should have bought some coconuts. Yeah. <laughs> I think the war diary did say here when the Queen's Bays were coming. A uh, few patrols were sent to where we're heading. We'll quickly tell that story. But they halted loads of them here. And the odds are William's one of them. So we'll have halted on this road, probably about where we are now. Just okay, so the, the big piece of the story here is that a few of the patrols uh, um, came out, broke out from the, the regiment. Um, and it said... Uh, I'm quoting from order here. The enemy put down a heavy barrage here, and it was especially heavy at these crossroads. And one patrol under Second Lieutenant Quested went, went now from where we're here at the crossroads, went 300 yards straight on as we're looking to see, you know, where most of the fire was coming from. And sadly, that his platoon was hit by machine gun fire. Gosh, look at the cemeteries here. Again, you can see we're in a really horrible part of the road up on the right there. Yeah. So you've got sunken, sunken road cemeteries. So I'm just getting out of the way of that drill. So yeah, this uh, this is right in the midst of the, the battle here. Okay. So yeah, when you look down, uh, 300 yards on from where we're looking, um, they looked and they were massacred with heavy machine gun fire. And it said all the horses of that patrol were killed. So, but none of the men, um, and they escaped under the cover. Again, we're in the horrible weather. We said it earlier, it was snowing. It was just filthy weather. Um, War Diary says village was heavily shelled throughout the operations at 4.30 PM. A message was received that the infantry would make another attack, but the attack didn't take place. It was just too uh, dangerous. And at, at 5.50 p.m. they were withdrawn back to where we started the story in Athens, in Ati. Um, and again, they're pretty cold forever. So the, the summary of this around the crossroads area, uh, Lieutenant Grant, Quested, Ascoli, Beddington were wounded. Four of the ranks killed. One was E. Dale that we went to see his grave and 18 were wounded. And horses, 10 killed, six wounded, and three died of exposure. Just, just a horrendous story, isn't it? But um, just, just yeah, you know, having done the war, Darren, and read the story, it's funny, isn't it, when you... I've read so much about Fonpu and how horrible it was here. Um, but to stand at the crossroads of it all and think, Gosh, you know, what he must have felt, what William must have felt experiencing all this. And Chris, of course now, it just looks so peaceful. Chris, were any of those buildings there then, or are they all new? I think it would have been bashed to bits, so I'd be absolutely amazed if any of this... I mean, what they did was they often built them with the same brick that they came down in, hence they, they look aged. But uh, what do you think, Jeff? I, I don't think there's anything left here. I don't know some of that, that barn were pretty old uh, uh, with the yeah. doors on it. So maybe damaged and rebuilt, so possibly. It looks quite new down there, doesn't it? It does. Right, we want to go up to that. Right, we just something I want to do for you, Mike, uh, and particularly here because of a story you told me. So we're going to... If you want to hang on, we're, we're only two minutes in the car from it. This is for Mike, because of a story you told me, Mike, about your, your dad, that you said 
um, one of the few things that you remember he, t- he told you about was just going to get the Scots in their kilts and they've been hammered. He obviously had a, he saw something not, not great. I'm almost certain there's only two places that could have happened. And I, I think it's very, very likely it's here because um, there were a few Scottish regiments who are here. And we look in the fields behind Roots, um, is this Sunken Road Cemetery? Sunken yeah. Road Cemetery. Um, we're looking at what would be killing fields of farm food. So this would be the territory that William was heading for. Um, and many of the men buried here, some of them are buried here, you know, the Scots. And we're just going to walk out of here because, again, I thought, particularly Mike, as you'd said, it was the bit that you remembered being told, I think it'd be nice to see this beautiful plant. Yeah. Yeah, so a number of them would have had the sanctuary, I think, in this sunken row. Um, just give them a bit of shelter, but then as soon as they've stuck their heads over the top, and then that's it, they've probably just been met with a hail of machine gun fire. Well, either there or further along here. Or that other road that we've just been up, that you insisted on getting lost on. Uh, yeah, it's just where we didn't film live in the beginning. <laughs> So we're walking towards the memorial now, but the truth is, you know, this this is the area of this horrendous battle. I, I've got the image just of the, that village being full of the Bay's horses. What a sight that must have been. Um, and seeing how many horses were killed through it all, and it must have been a day of hell, a real day of hell. Uh, and hearing Williams, or hearing of William talking about the Scots were absolutely hammered here. Uh, when I did a bit of research on it all, they were, this bomb who is uh, a really horrible history for them. That's why I just thought it'd be nice to take this in. We're on top of the hill overlooking bomb poo. And you'll see. It's uh, more overlooking the, the fields, overlooking the, the battle area. We have, uh, we just walked it for the first time, so we're not sure what it says yet. There you go. I'll read that down. I hope you can see it anyway. Mm. The memory of the officers and warrant officers on commission, on commission officers and private soldiers of the Sea for Highlanders. Officers, brothers, gave their lives for their king and country in the Great War in 1940. This is where their so I think that's your Scottish story, Mike. Mm, the kilts. Mm. What, what's on the cross? What are the images? Uh, they'll be the the regiments. Is that an elephant? It is, yeah. Uh, and then it's the stat. Well, that's SS, isn't it? SS there. S. Yeah. Make out what it says. Uh, it could be Latin. It could just be... Is faded. This is obviously very old, and it's yeah. almost impossible to read that. And then you've got the stag, and then what's above the stag's head? The crown. It looks like crown. Uh, sort of Celtic. Oh, Celtic. That's, Celtic. Like, that's Celtic like a Celtic cross, cross isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, right. Yeah. 